Hello and welcome to your first sculpture boot camp for our Earth Art Unit. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. Lute and I'm one of the art teachers here at the high school. Now the purpose of these videos is to introduce you to some basic construction techniques using very basic supplies and the supplies that we've asked you to bring for each day. These are meant to be experimental exercises where you make mistakes, but you find discoveries along the way. So don't get discouraged if things don't work out the first time. During this first video, we'll be looking at two different sculpture techniques, carving and assembly. We've asked you to go out and forage for supplies to bring to class today. I asked you to get some leaves of different sizes, different shapes. I asked you to get some really small twigs, possibly some other bigger branches that you might need. And then if you could find some, I definitely asked you to go out and get some pine needles. You'll see how useful these will become later. And then some other supplies you might need. If you have a pair of scissors, that would be awesome. If you don't have a pair of scissors, to be honest with you, a good rock with a nice sharp edge might just do the trick. But if you have other supplies like maybe an X-Acto knife or access to a utility knife or even a possibly a pocket knife for carving. Now, I'm not asking you to go to your kitchen and get any steak knives or any knives. We are not dulling any kitchen color right here. A pair of scissors will work just fine. Some other supplies that might also come in handy too is some twine or yarn. If you have any tying devices, dental floss works too, rubber bands, embroidery thread, anything that we can use to tie and lash for later. But once you have all your supplies, let's get ready to sculpt. All right, let's first start with your leaves. Let's talk about these as a material. Leaves make for a really nice, interesting material because they're a lot like paper, or they're a lot like fabric. Um, but as far as a construction material, they're not very strong. So a couple things you could do with it first is you could possibly get paint, you could draw on it, almost like it is paper. Um, because it's symmetric, you could also fold it over too and maybe treat it like a snowflake and cut shapes into it. Or maybe if you've seen this picture floating around the internet, you know that there's some other really cool things you can do with leaves. We're gonna look at leaves kind of as a fabric or some kind of construction material where we can create some kind of surface and then take that surface and make it into a form or three dimensional surface. So one way to attach these you would think is possibly using tape or glue or even a hot glue gun, but really tape's not gonna stick and glue's not gonna dry very well because these are living, were living things and have a lot of moisture in them. Hot glue might work for a little bit, but probably not hold up over the long term. So a very basic way to go about connecting these and start constructing with these is through a process called pinning. Very much similar to sewing using a running stitch. You could overlap them at any point and use some kind of material to pin them together. One material we could use to pin these together is a stick. Now, if you look at this stick, it's covered in bark and it's rather crude. If I go to poke a hole and try to stitch into a leaf with this, it's going to leave rather a rather large hole and be pretty destructive to my stick. So I got to think about what can I do to this? How can I manipulate this to make this a better tool for me? And one way to do that is through the sculpting process of carving. So I want to get a, my carving supply. If at the very least you don't have anything, you can try to find a rock with a sharp edge. It's going to take some extra work and it'll take a little more uh, technique, but you could possibly remove the bark with that that way. Um, otherwise, if you have a pair of scissors, all scissors come with a nice kind of sharp edge. You would just need to find that angle to use and it works as a carving device. And you can see with a little work and patience, you can trim that down so you can start to define the point. Now, Additionally, too, if you have an X-Acto blade or a utility knife or even possibly a carving knife of any sort, you could also go about carving it that way, which will be a lot easier. A couple of tips when it comes to carving. You always want to hold the knife blade away from you. You never want to carve towards you. You run the risk of cutting into your other hand. One trick you can do is if you take a winter glove, if you have work gloves, work gloves are great, but also sometimes to take even just a winter glove on your non-carving hand to hold the piece. That way, in case you do slip, you have a protective layer on top of your skin. So when you carve, you always wanna make sure the knife blade is pointed away from you and never press really deep 90 degree angle down into the wood. You run the risk of cutting the wood and slipping and cutting your fingers. So always just put a little bit of a pressure and point the blade down slightly 
pull off a little bit of wood and rotate the stick as you go then to make nice even carves on each side. And another helpful tip is to take your thumb of your other hand and use it as a guide. Always make very small carving motions and take your time. You notice if you rotate, you'll be able to get a nice kind of thin tip there. This now, as a tool, becomes better than this. Now, while you're carving as well, maybe when you're carving, here's another one that I made, maybe you wanna leave some of the bark on for a visual look. So how you would go about using this, I take my two leaves, I overlap them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create what's called a running stitch. So I'm gonna take my tool, I'm gonna to puncture down, push it in on the back, cross over the vein of the leaf, and I'm gonna press it back through, which creates a pin to there. I'm gonna take another piece, maybe I'll use this other one. Overlap it, press down, cross over the vein, and then come back up the other side. And now I've created these together. So now the process of whittling down sticks to make pins is fun, but it might get kind of time consuming when you're trying to construct. This is where such things as pine needles and even the stems off of your leaves will come in handy too as a tool. Overlap, puncture a hole, puncture a hole. Get one of your pine needles and stitch together that way. Maybe you do more of a running stitch, which would be a stronger hole. You can also use the stems of the leaves that you used. Take my tool, And now you've created a running stitch with a stem. Once you have materials that you can use to either carve pins or use pine needles and other materials, you can start creating various things. Think about how you can arrange these leaves. Look at the different shapes of the leaves. Think about what other different three-dimensional shapes you can make by pinning leaves together. How can you bend them like origami and fold them to make them into interesting forms? The next objects I'd like to look at is our sticks and branches and how we can go about assembling these together to build some kind of construction or some kind of three-dimensional object. Without tools, it's really hard to connect these together and to assemble these together. One option, if without any materials you could do, is you could look for sticks where the ends are split. And you using a tool or a knife or a rock, you could wedge a rock in there and you could force it open. Right, um, and then take another stick and using a tool, whittle it down and wedge it in there and use it as a, as a wedge, almost like a clothes pin and then create, connect two sticks together like so. And then take a Y shaped stick and use these forms to balance together. As you can see here, then I've created a three dimensional form. Then I can... another way to go about constructing and assembling two sticks together is through the process called lashing. Lashing is when you take a rope or a twine or yarn or any kind of string material and you bind two sticks together. I am going to use some twine that I have here in my garage. The first thing you want to do is tie your string or your yarn or your other material to your stick in the area that you want to lash them together. Then put the two sticks together and through an over under over under process, I'm going to take the rope, I'm going to go over this stick, go under the other stick that it's connected to, then back over so it's symmetric. Pulling on it to make sure it's tight. I'm gonna go back under, go back over, under, over and repeating this pattern several times. I'm holding it now with my finger underneath. 
several times like that. Then as I come up before coming back over, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take it and I'm going to wrap it around between the two sticks. What this does is it puts tension on the over under you just did, making it even tighter. Do that several times as well, at the minimum two times for each wrap. Then when I'm finished off, I'm gonna go back to one of these logs and I'm gonna tie it off. Cut off the end. And then you can see here, as that is a lashing, the lashing of two sticks together. This becomes very strong and allows you then to start assembling branches, multiple branches together to start creating three-dimensional forms, different structures. And then once you get good and practice, you can start attaching more sticks together and start creating very interesting forms and seeing how these different shapes and these different pieces could interact together. Then you can start taking some of your leaf sculptures and think about how they interact and how they can be joined together to possibly create some interesting earth art sculptures. Now the idea is with these newfound sculpture techniques of carving, pinning, manipulating, assembling, and lashing, what can you make? How can you incorporate these ideas together? Do you have enough supplies? Where's the best place to work? The expectation you use this next time to explore, to problem solve, to see what, these, what it's like to even work with these new materials. Listen to your teacher for the next steps that's the most important and just have fun working with your hands.